let's, uh, why don't we start off with some questions to review what we did last time. So a region of space where there is an electric field pointing upward in the positive y direction, due to charges not shown in the diagram, we place a neutral copper block, so this square is this neutral copper block, in this region where there is this exi uh, existing electric field. Which diagram best describes the charge distribution on the block? Let's start with that. Okay, so most of us are saying that it's going to be polarized because we have a conductor, right? Metal is a, uh, we have our copper as a conductor, it's a metal. And um, we have an electric field pointing upward. So if we think about how that external electric field or that applied electric field affects the mobile electron C inside the uh, conductor, it's going to, the electric force on the negative charge is going to be downward. And so the mobile electron C shifts downward a little bit, okay? And then the diagram convention is we want to draw, we know that on conductors, uh, the charge is only going to be on the surface, not in the interior. So we want to make sure we draw any uh, excess charge in our diagram on the surface to indicate that. And the, the number of charges just is indicating essentially the, how much charge there is. So we want to make sure we draw, if it's neutral, starts off with a net charge of Something neutral has a net charge of zero, thank you. So to indicate that it's still neutral, it's polarized, but it still has a net charge of zero. So we you know, roughly draw four negative charges, four plus charges to show that there's roughly the same amount of negative as there is positive charge on the entire surface, okay? So, so that's a, just polarization of a conductor. What about this one? If we have a negatively charged iron block. So it already has a negative charge, and then we place it in a region of electric field where the field is pointing downward, negative y direction, due to charges not shown. Which diagram best describes the charge distribution in or on the iron block in this case? And not quite as much agreement this time, but we're saying, most of us are saying answer number three. Um, so why three and not two? It already has a negative charge, right? So in the absence of any other electric fields, uh, you could have a, an object, say a conducting object, that had a negative charge already placed on it. Later we'll talk about how methods of charging and discharging. So it already has some negative charge, but now it's also charged and polarized, right? Because there's a separation of charge due to the applied electric field. The electric field is pointing downward. And so once again, the force on the mobile electron C is going to be upward. And so you'll end up with a greater, or a greater concentration of uh, negative charge on the top than you have on the bottom. So uh, diagram three is probably the best choice there, okay? Four, you have the polarization wrong. Five, we know we can't have any excess charge in the interior of a conductor, right? It's only going to go to the surface. And then one and two are showing neutral objects. So three is, three is the best choice there, okay? There's a re is there a reason why all the charges don't, don't go to the top? Well, it, it reaches some equilibrium because, remember, you have the, the lattice itself or the, the, the ions left over, the ionic cores, attracting the uh, electrons in the first place, right? I mean, the, the, so, so there's going to be some point where you reach a balance, and how much charge builds up here is going to depend on the strength of the electric field. In practice, it's very difficult to have all the charge uh, appear, you know, be concentrated on, on one particular end. You would need a really high electric field, okay? But it's just, it's just a question of degree. How, how large is this electric field is going to determine how much charge concentrates on one particular part versus the the other, okay? Uh, it's, it, that's just diagram. There's, there's going to be some, in fact, there's probably going to be some amount of charge on the side, right? But in the, uni, in the uniform electric field, we're going to have a greater concentration toward the top than on the bottom, okay? So it, it's a cartoony picture. We're not trying to show complete accuracy, but we're at least getting the, the basic idea, okay? Uh, sure, how would you notice that? You could measure... You could measure the electric field at some particular location, right? 
because you could say uh, at this observation location, we have the original electric field that's being applied by the external charges, right? But now we're also going to have a net electric field or an electric field contribution due to the charges on the surface, right? If we're closer to a, a greater concentration of charge, we should notice a larger field here than versus here at the same distance, right? I mean, that might, might be difficult to measure, but it's some one way you could measure it. Here we go. A neutral copper block is polarized as shown due to an electric field made by external charges not shown. What's the direction of the net electric field at location B? Well, location B is here inside the copper block. Direction of the net electric field at B. Okay, and we're all over the map. So let's see. We have some people saying it's answer number one. The net electric field is pointing up. Some people are saying it's down. And some people are saying it's zero. Well, we got to be a little bit careful here. The and clearly there's an electric field due to some charges somewhere else that is causing this polarization, right? If we start off with a neutral copper block, then like we said before, we have some applied electric field that causes a polarization, and the applied electric field would have to be in what direction? That would have to be down, right? So maybe there's some positive charge up here or some negative charge down here or something like that that's creating an applied electric field downward. But once you've created this polarization, you now have what? The charges on the surface are going to do what? Okay, well, they're going to affect the charges on the side, but they're also going to do something at location B. Okay, so you're going to reach equilibrium, right? And so we're going to have a situation where the charges, the positive charges here and the negative charges here on the surfaces make an electric field pointing up. Okay, so if I were to write these two contributions, we have E applied and then E due to surface charges. Okay. Now it's got to be up, right? Positive charges make an electric field pointing away. Negative charges make an electric field pointing towards them. So both contributions give you an electric field pointing up. And then when I add those two together, what am I going to get? Going to get zero, right? Remember last time we talked about a property of conductors at static equilibrium. Static equilibrium means that the average speed of the mobile charges or the drift speed of the mobile charges is zero. So there's no net motion of the charges anymore. Conductors at static equilibrium, inside the conductor, the net electric field is equal to zero. Okay. So we've got to have a point where these two are equal to each other. They cancel each other out. They're in opposite directions. E net is equal to zero. Okay, so nine's the answer. Answer number nine is the correct answer. So this is a tricky thing to get to wrap your head around. Let's try another example of this just to get drive this home. Okay, so here's a, a, a this kind of blobby looking object. Let's say it's a piece of metal. Okay, some conductor, and we're looking at location A, which is inside that metal. And we have two external charges. Q1 is negative, Q2 is positive, and they're brought near this piece of metal. Take a minute in your notes, draw a diagram, draw this diagram, and then draw and label the following electric field vectors. The electric field at point A due to Q1, this negative charge. The electric field at point A due to Q2. And then the electric field at point A due to any surface charge on the metal. Okay, so take a minute and just draw the diagram and draw the electric fields, and then we'll ask a question about your diagram. Okay, do we have diagrams? Let's try a question. So looking at your diagram, which of these four, or answer three, don't have enough information, uh, best resembles or is the best choice of the electric field vectors for this particular situation. 
E1 is the tr electric field due to Q1, E2 is electric field due to Q2, E metal is the electric field due to any surface charge on the metal itself. Okay, so answer number one looks like to be the best choice of diagram there. What's wrong with uh, four and five? What? Yeah, they only can't, we're one of the fields, right? It only cancels out one of the fields. So the net electric field doesn't look like it's zero in diagram four or five. And the problem with two is, yeah, one's going the wrong way, right? The electric field due to the negative charge, E1, should point towards the negative. And the electric field due to the positive should point away from the positive, And it might be bigger because it's closer. And then when you add those two together and get that summation, you should have then the electric field due to the metal pointing in the opposite direction so that E net again is equal to zero. Okay. So you need to be very careful about how the questions are phrased. Okay, if we're talking about electric fields inside a conductor, it's the electric field due to what? Okay, is it the electric? Is it the net electric field? Well, it's static equilibrium. That's always zero. Is it the electric field due to the external charges, the applied electric field, or is it the electric field due to the polarization charges, the surface charges on the metal? And this thing would have to polarize. I don't know. Maybe some positive up here and some negative down here to produce a field that looks like that. Uh, but so parsing apart, you know, a question and seeing what what con or what uh, the field do to what at what location. Those are the things you need to think about when you're doing these types of problems. Okay. Are we okay?